Good morning and welcome back to the reading of God's Word. We are now at midweek and we are going to finish up the book of Mark. We're going to be in Mark chapters 11 through 16. And what we are doing is transitioning now from Jesus the servant to Jesus the sacrifice as we begin the, the, the last part now of this book of Mark, the gospel of Mark. So with that, we're looking at... Um, uh, as we go through these chapters, really from 11 through 16, uh, as with all four Gospels, really, uh, what we're going to see is the recording of what is known as the Passion Week. And it is the week, it is the begins with the entry into Jerusalem, ends, of course, with the crucifixion and the resurrection. So it is... Um, it is a, a very busy time. This is why Jesus came. It was in, his intent all along to do this. So we begin in chapter 11. Jesus approaches Jerusalem at Bethpage, and he sends his disciples to get the donkey. He was going to this to, to, um, uh, to, um, uh, to fulfill the, the prophecies that, that were made about him and how the king would enter into the city. So he does, he enters the city on this donkey and the people singing Hosanna. In other words, they were praising him as he was coming into the city because of who they perceived him to be, the new king. And these were the same people that by Friday were hollering and screaming, crucify him. So you see how fast things can move around. So this is a very busy week for Jesus as he completes uh, the very purpose for which the Father had sent him. In chapter 11, Jesus enters Jerusalem, but on his way from Bethany, he curses a fig tree. And when he gets to that fig tree, he finds no fruit on it. This is representative of, of Israel itself not being able to produce the fruit that it was designed to do, that God called it to do. And so the fig tree wilted. And that fig tree is interesting there and is symbolic of the rejection by Israel. Remember that in Mark, Matthew, and Mark, uh, excuse me, in Matthew chapter 24, verses 32 through 35, that in the parable of the fig tree, the fig tree would eventually put those leaves back on. And he told us whenever that fig tree, when you see the blooming of the fig tree and, and the leaves coming back on, know that he is near. So this, this fig tree has been dormant, representatively, uh, has been dormant now all the way up until 1948. And for, for almost 2,000 years, that um, now, now you can see uh, the, the reemergence of the country of Israel. God has a plan. And we're not going to get into eschatology right now, where it would take us a long ways out of the way here from what we're doing. So we're going to read, continue to read here in, in the book of Mark as we finish out. Now, from chapter 11, verse 20 through chapter 13, Mark records a lot of different teachings and some various things. Um, as we see in chapter uh, 11, verse 12, Je Jesus enters the temple and begins teaching. This is interesting. He comes into the temple to teach, and he's there all week doing that. Not only did he cleanse the temple again the second time, but he's there teaching as well. And the uh, priests and the scribes and, and those uh, religious leaders would not put their hands on him. Why? Because they would, the, the, the crowds would probably stone them. So they couldn't do anything with him. And so he preached there for a whole, a whole week, as well, most of that week. And then whenever they did come out to arrest him on that Thursday night, you know, he asked them, well, why now? Since I was in the temple all week, so why didn't you put your hands on me then? So this is pretty, he, he begins to disarm them uh, at that time. So, but, that, but anyway, he knew what he was doing and, and he knew that it was going to result in what he had intended to do all along and that was to be that sacrifice. In chapter 13, we read the apocalyptic discourse. This is, the, this is basically a, a little bit of, of what we get over in Matthew. We'll see it again in Luke. Um, 
which you know it corresponds to to Matthew chapter 24 really so he will get a little bit of that in chapter 13 chapter 14 covers a lot of ground including his announcement um, uh, in, in, in announcement the anointment by Mary my Mary of Bethany uh, it also includes the Last Supper, the Lord's Supper, they instituted the Lord's Supper there, which we, we uh, have the ordinance of the Lord's Supper that we still observe and the ordinance of baptism, the only two things that we have that, uh, that we follow him with in, in as far as ordinances are concerned. Uh, he walks to, he goes to Gethsemane where he prays, um, and these are, these are very powerful prayers. Um, and then finally, in there in the, in the garden, of course, that's where he's arrested. Then we move into chapter 14, verse 50, 53 through chapter 15, through verse 20, is the mock trial and the abuse by the priests and the Romans. So he goes through this series of trials where, where he uh, immediately is arrested. He comes up, then he has to go in front of uh, the priest, and then they send him over to... Um, uh, the the, uh, the Roman authorities, where he has to go through uh, a, a mock kind of a trial, though though he was trying to be released, yet he was um, he knew what was going to happen all along. Uh, we need we know the story of him trying to be released, uh, but they wanted Barabbas and so forth and so on. It, that's in a different different one. So anyway, we move on through. Now, after the trial, after everything has happened, we come to the very event, the crucifixion itself. And that is, the, that is a cornerstone of all civilization, that God has come back now to save us, and that sacrifice has taken place. And so we have the death in chapter 15, death and burial of Christ. And it is interesting to note here, too, um, Mark only records one of seven sayings or seven cryings that were that uh, Jesus uttered from the cross, and so that's why we do cross walking in the, all four gospels. There's seven sayings from the cross, but Mark only records one of them. So that is uh, sort of an interesting thought right there. And and. And the reason for that, really, to go back to it, is why there. This is all seen in, from four different viewpoints. Of course, Peter and John were there. Peter, of course, giving Mark his information. John was an eyewitness, and um, but neither Mark nor Luke were. Uh, Matthew was an eyewitness, so we we get that. That's why we get these different uh, different uh, looks and, and, and discussions throughout these four Gospels. And finally, in chapter 16, his resurrection, including his appearances to certain people, he appears to Mary Magdalene and some of the other, if you go to the other Gospels, he, he, there's other ladies that, that, that happened to be there at the tomb whenever uh, they showed up on the next day. Uh, and the angels met them and told them he's not here. He has gone ahead of them. And uh, there is a reference in chapter 16, verse 12, to him appearing to two men walking on the road, which is better recorded in Luke chapter 24, verses 13 through 35, which is, of course, the walk to Emmaus. So when you read that, you, you kind of want to fast forward over to Luke and take a, take a quick look at that. And with the ascension in, in chapter 16, verses 19 through 20, uh, and the Great Commission in Matthew chapter 28, 19 and 20. And uh, 50 days later, we get to Pentecost. We re with the receiving of the Holy Spirit of God. And it's at that point, we have moved now from the age of the law to the age of grace. And this is the church age. We're still living in that church age. And so we're, we're waiting on it. We're waiting on his second return. He is now uh, in what we would call the 60, we're at the 69th week, according to Daniel, waiting on that 70th week to occur. So as we move and as we read through these gospels, we move into some exciting reading about the early church. As we're going to, after these, we're going to go into Acts and this is how it will be, how everything will get started. 
uh, a lot of discussion when we get to the book of Acts. So with that, may God bless the reading of his word.